Oh, um, we know that God made heaven and earth in six days and rested on the seventh. So is it wrong to work on the seventh day? No, of course not. It is wrong to work on the seventh day. The seventh day is Saturday in our times. It is the Sabbath of the Jews. But that particular commandment about Sabbath was uh, amended by our Lord Jesus Christ. It is not anymore the law in the Christian dispensation. In fact, uh, our Lord Jesus Christ did work on the Sabbath. His apostles are working in Sabbath day. So they were persecuted by the Sabbath keepers. You can read that in the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and the book of Acts, where the Christians, or our Lord Jesus Christ and His disciples, were persecuted by the Sabbath keepers because they have uh, been working in Sabbath. A particular instance is in the book of John, in, in chapter 5, verse uh, 18. For the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. See that? The reason why the Jews want to kill our Lord Jesus Christ is because he broke their Sabbath. He is not one with them in keeping their Sabbath. The allegation of the Seventh-day Adventist Church that Jesus Christ is going to the synagogue to keep the Sabbath is not true. Let us read the book of Luke chapter 4, verse 16 onwards. And He came to Nazareth where He had been brought up. And as His custom was, He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. They will stop here. After reading this, the Seventh-day Adventists will stop and will say that, uh, therefore, Jesus Christ is keeping the Sabbath because He is going to the synagogue on Sabbath as His custom was. But what is His intention in going to the synagogue on Sabbath day? Let us continue reading. And there was, a, there was delivered unto Him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when He opened the book, He found the place where it was written, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And He closed the book, and He gave it again to the minister, and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on Him. And He began to say unto them, this day is, this is scripture fulfilled in your ears. 22. And all bear him witness and wonder that the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is that this Joseph's son? And he said unto them, He will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. And he said, Verily I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you a truth. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heavens were shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land. But unto none of them was Elijah sent, save unto Saref, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisha, the prophet. And none of them was cleansed, save, saving Naaman, the Syrian. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath, and rose up and thrust him out of the city, and led him into the brow of the hill whereon their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. You see that? What happened when... Our Lord Jesus Christ went into the synagogue. He preached, citing the verse in Isaiah. He preached about Himself, His teachings. And when they heard Him teaching them the truth, they were angered. They were filled with wrath. And they rose up and thrust Him out of the city. Is that a proof that Jesus Christ is uh, keeping the Sabbath? The Sabbath keepers in the synagogue 
uh, wherein he entered were angry with him because he is not one of them. He is reasoning uh, with them on Sabbath day as the custom also of the Apostle Paul. Let us read the book of Acts 18 verse 4 and it says, And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. So therefore, uh, uh, the Apostle Paul is not uh, a Sabbath keeper as the Seventh-day Adventist claim. He is going to the synagogue every Sabbath to persuade the Sabbath keepers. It is not to go with them or to be one with them, but to persuade, persuade them to, to acknowledge our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why the Sabbath keepers in the Philippines and in every, every part of the world now are spreading lies about uh, the Sabbath. It is not anymore a rule or a, a law in the Christian dispensation. We have now an spiritual Sabbath. And that Sabbath is the day that the Lord hath made in the book of Psalms, chapter 118, verse 20, 21, and 22. Let us read those verses. This gate, this gate of the Lord into which the righteous shall enter. I will praise thee, for thou hast heard me and art become my salvation. The stone which the builders refused is become the headstone of the corner. 23. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord hath made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. See that? The day that the Lord has, has made is the stone also which the builders, builders rejected. And this is our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is symbolic of a day. And this is the day, the only day left for the Christian dispensation to be kept as Sabbath. Let us read 4.9 of the book of Hebrews. And it says, There, there remaineth, remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. There is only one Sabbath for the people of God. And that is a day, a Sabbath, a rest. Not two, not three, not fifty-two. There are fifty-two Saturdays in a year, which the Sabbath keepers, the Seventh-day Adventists, keep. But there remaineth a rest, one day of rest for the people of God. And, and to prove that, let us read for 7 and up to 8 of again, the book of Hebrews. Again, He limited a certain day. He limited a certain day, saying in David, Today, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if ye will hear His voice, harden not your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? You see, this is another day that was kept by Joshua and the Israelites. And what was kept by Joshua and the Israelites is the seventh day or uh, the Sabbath of the Jews. The seventh day, Saturday. But he limited a certain day which he prepared for the people of God. And he did not give it to Joshua. And what is this day? This is the day that the Lord hath made in the book of Psalms. This is the stone, which is our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is a day. Uh, and that Jesus Christ as a day is the Sabbath of Christians. Let us prove that in the book of Matthew chapter 11 verses 28 to 30 it says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and, and I will give you rest. See, our Lord Jesus Christ is speaking in this verse. I will give you rest. Come unto me, those that labor and are heavily laden, I will give you rest. Now, 29. Take my yoke upon you, and, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. 30. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. See that? You will find rest unto your soul. This is a spiritual Sabbath. This is not the literal seventh-day Sabbath as the Jews have observed. This is the Sabbath of the New Testament. That day is our Lord Jesus Christ inviting all of us, all those uh, that labor and heavily laden, come to me and I will give you rest and you will find 
rest for your soul. That is the Sabbath of Christian. It is only one day, and that day is uh, symbolic of our Lord Jesus Christ. When you are, if you enter Christ, you will enter an eternal rest for your soul. That is it, brother or sister.